Welcome to episode 2 of Rock the Boat with Richard Hagen here on Yachting International Radio. Tonight's episode features a big catamaran, some smaller catamarans, a rescue boat, a folding boat and some little ships. Let's get started. In my first story, Polish catamaran manufacturer Sunreef has announced that it is currently building a new all-electric luxury catamaran called the Sunreef 80 Eco. Sunreef calls this the world's most advanced sustainable luxury catamaran. The yacht will feature a solar skin system consisting of the world's lightest solar cells according to Sunreef. These will be integrated with the yacht's body including the hull sides, the superstructure, the bimini and its carbon mast. A total of 150 square meters of solar cells will deliver up to 34 kilowatts peak a reference to the maximum amount of energy it will deliver in ideal conditions such as midday sun. When not under sail, the Sunreef 80 Eco will be propelled by two 180 kilowatt engines. When it is under sail, above 7 knots, Sunreef says it has an advanced hydro generation system to recover energy from the rotation of the propellers. This is said to be enough energy to power the propulsion and the onboard appliances. Sunreef has been developing its eco range for some time and it now includes a 50, a 60 and a 70 in addition to this new 80. All four yachts boast the same distinctive integrated solar cells and all are fully customizable to the owner's specifications. Sunreef is based in Poland and has been making quite a name for itself recently with a series of high profile yacht deliveries. The most notable of these was a custom 80 power catamaran built for tennis star Rafael Nadal and delivered in June 2020. The boat was actually a birthday present to himself which he named Great White. It reportedly cost around 6.2 million dollars and features a fully customized interior, two 1200 horsepower engines and five cabins which includes an owner's cabin and four guest cabins. And now a story from my home, South Africa. The National Sea Rescue Institute has announced a partnership with local boat builder Two Oceans Marine for the manufacturer of the NSRI's new 140 offshore rescue craft or AUK for short. The AUK vessels are intended to replace existing aging rescue craft at several NSRI stations around the South African coast. The new vessels have a top speed of 28 knots at a range of 250 nautical miles. The craft will give the NSRI true offshore capabilities, allowing them to reliably extend their operations into deep sea rescue scenarios. The Orcs originate in France, with the first vessel having been built there and shipped to South Africa. The NSRI has reached an agreement with Two Oceans Marine to build the remaining eight vessels. Two Oceans Marine is a boatyard based here in Cape Town and they've got an enviable reputation for producing some of the toughest and also most popular power catamarans in South Africa. Their magnum range of sports fishing power cats are designed to comfortably take on the most difficult sea conditions. They're famous for their smooth, comfortable ride, keeping their crew safe and dry as they head out to catch the famous game fish off South Africa's coast. I'll be documenting some of the Magnum boats in future episodes here, so keep an eye out for that. The current agreement is a 10 year plan that will see Two Oceans Marine build all 8 Orcs. The first of the locally built models is named Donna Nicholas and is scheduled for delivery to the NSRI's Station 10 Simonstown base early this year still. Orc number 3 is planned for delivery later in 2021 to NSRI Station 17 in Hermanus. The remainder of the production schedule is still to be announced. The NSRI is an all-volunteer organization dedicated to saving the lives of seafarers in distress. It was established in 1967 following a storm that caused the loss of 17 fishermen near the town of Mussel Bay. It's the only such service in South Africa and, remarkably, it's fully funded by donations. Today, the NSRI boasts over 1,350 volunteers at 42 rescue bases located around the coast and on some dams. 
Their volunteers respond to rescues on a daily basis, leaving their families and jobs behind to risk their own lives to save the lives of others. The NSRI is currently appealing for donations to help fund the Orc boat rollout and in return you can have your name or that of a loved one appear on the exterior of the boat. If you'd like to donate towards this project or if you want to donate to the NSRI in general I'll put a link in the description. I've been donating for almost 15 years now and I encourage everyone, especially South Africans, to do the same. And now, back to catamarans, because why not? Multi-Hulls World magazine has opened voting on its popular Multi-Hull of the Year contest. This is an annual contest that generates a lot of interest in the catamaran industry. The brands behind the nominated boats get their marketing teams into action and really push their fans to vote for their company's boats. So for those of us who love cats, it's a good time. The nominated boats are placed into four categories under 45 feet, 45 to 55 feet, over 55 feet, and power cats, or multi-power as they call it. The 2021 contest nominees were selected by juries from multi Hulls World and from the International multi Hull Show. I think they've done a fine selection of putting together a group of really exciting nominees. Luckily, if you're planning on participating in the vote, you don't have to choose only one favorite. Voters can select their favorite boat in each one of the four categories. Nice! One of the standout contestants for me is a boat that I've personally never seen before, the Dragonfly 40. This is a trimaran, meaning it has three hulls. It's built by Corning Boats, which was founded in 1967 and is based in Denmark. Only a month ago, the Dragonfly 40 won European Yacht of the Year in the Performance Cruiser category, so it's likely to give its fill-in nominees in the 45 foot and under category some stiff competition. The Dragonfly 40 is designed for offshore cruising, with an emphasis on easy handling, high average speeds and ease of berthing. And when I talk about ease of berthing, I'm referring to an award-winning feature of Dragonfly trimarans, their swing wing hulls. This is a unique system that allows the Dragonfly's outriggers to fold up inwards towards the main hull, reducing the overall hull width substantially. Here it is in action. The swing wing system allows Dragonfly yachts to sneak into berths that they otherwise would never be able to fit into with their outriggers extended. Pretty cool. Personally, my favorite nominee of the group is the new Signature 580 from Privilege Catamarans, and I'm probably butchering that name, so if you know the correct pronunciation, please let me know. Privilege is based in France and prides itself on its offering to owners to completely customize the boat. The Signature 580 is a model whose development I've actually been following for some time. It was launched only last month and completed her first sea trial just in time to be in the running for the multi-hull awards. It's a gorgeous boat packed full of luxury and great features. Two really stand out for me. One is that it has a cockpit seating area forward of the saloon which is accessed directly from the saloon. And secondly, the owner's cabin is located athwart ships forward of the saloon and is accessed directly from the saloon as well. That's very unusual because in most catamarans, the cabins are in one of the two hulls. Speaking of two hulls, my final news story today is from Nordhaven, which has announced the addition of two new models, the Nordhaven 625 and the Nordhaven 71. In the unlikely event that you've never heard of Nordhaven before, they're a veteran manufacturer of pocket explorer yachts. Nordhaven boats have a well-deserved reputation for toughness, reliability, independence, and true exploration capabilities. They're boats that allow their owners to go out and stay out in almost any conditions, just about anywhere, both comfortably and safely. Fans of Nordhaven fondly refer to these boats as little ships, since Nordhaven yachts boast design features usually reserved for much larger vessels. The company says that the 625 will essentially be a refresh of their existing Nordhaven 60 or N60. The flybridge is now slightly bigger. 
the cabins get bigger windows, and some seating has been added to the foredeck. Nordhaven says that these changes will make the 625 feel like a bigger boat. The N625 will have three cabins, two below decks and one behind the wheelhouse. The new boat will come with more equipment and features as standard, but to keep costs down won't be as customizable as the 60. The 625 will be built at their new Taiwanese facility. The first boat in the series is expected to be complete by the end of this year. It seems that boat and the next one are already spoken for because the next available hull is hull number 3 which is being offered for two and a half million dollars. While the 625 was a facelift of an existing model, the Nordhaven 71 is a completely new boat. The company says it will provide its owners with an elegant, modern, state-of-the-art explorer yacht. It's aimed at customers with the budget for the higher end of the market but who want the ability to manage a boat without any crew. And it looks like Nordhaven was right. The first three hulls have all already been sold to existing owners of smaller Nordhaven yachts. The N71 will have the latest in technology and creature comforts and will have true ocean crossing capability. The yacht is available with either a three stateroom layout or one that loses the sky lounge in favor of a fourth stateroom. As with the 625, this model will have many more standard features and less customization available in order to speed up production time but some customization will still be offered to owners, mainly in terms of furniture items such as the dining table, chairs and soft furnishings like pillows. Nordhaven says that this new model will be built at another one of their yards in Taiwan, with the first hull expected to begin construction in January 2022. The price tag for one of these little ships is about $5 million. That's it for this week's news, thanks a lot for watching and if you enjoyed the content, remember to hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. If you have any questions about this episode, please leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Likewise, if you have suggestions for future episodes, I'd love to hear them. Before I sign off, just a reminder that when I'm not making these videos, I'm a copywriter providing specialist written content for the boating industry. I produce professional blogs, email marketing, product descriptions and website content all written by someone who actually understands boats. I offer affordable pricing and quick turnaround times, so if you're looking to hire a writer, I'd love to hear from you. Visit my website at richardhagen.com to book a call. This is Richard Hagen, I've been your host and this has been another episode of Rock the Boat. See you next week.